Hello and welcome to Class Time. Remember you can catch us live every weekday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on TVJ and on OneSpotMedia.com. You can also keep up with us on our various social media platforms and use the hashtag to make queries or answer online questions. I'm Brittany Henderson. And I am Wadian Price. And we are your teachers for today's mathematics lesson. Let us begin. All right. So today we're going to be looking at some problem solving questions. Yes. Right? So our focus is going to be on problem solving featuring algebra, relations, functions, and graphs. Mm. So exciting times and let's jump in. Problem solving. We need to talk about some strategies that you can utilize in your exams mm -hmm. to be better prepared to answer these problem solving questions. All right. So. Uh -huh. All right. So, so the first one is obvious. You have to read the problem carefully. Right. And why is that so important? Because there are times when there are hints in there that you need to pick up, you need to figure out what type of math you're going to use. Yeah. You need to really understand the question. How are you mm. going to understand it? Read it carefully. Definitely. All right. Mm. What is the question and what do we need to solve for? And again, straightforward. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to actually solve a question, you, you need to know what are they really asking me to do. So very crucial. All right. Assign variables to unknown quantities, for example, x and y. Mm. So if you're reading a prob your problem and you have some unknowns, mm -hmm. assign some variables to these unknowns so that you can then manipulate it later on when you go to solve the question. Definitely. And as you said, these are just examples, x and y. Mm -hmm. So it could be any other, other um, variables that we are using. That is also true. Mm. So again, we can translate the words into algebraic expressions by rewriting the given information in terms of the variables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then um, step five. All right, so step five, set up a system of equations if yeah. needed, right? Yeah. All right, so we set up a system mm -hmm. of equations. And very important, yeah. check your solution. Check, check. So a lot of the times we're going through our questions and we go really, really mm -hmm, fast. Mm -hmm. But in essence, you made a mistake. Yeah. How will you know? Check your answer. Don't be so sure. Don't be so quick. Stop and check what mm -hmm. it is that you're doing. Definitely. Or what you've done. Write the final answer. Finale. <laughs> and we're over, right? So, so you can, we, can imagine checked, you, you, you did all of this work. And then don't write your final answer. Boy, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? All right. So the finale, always write your yeah. answer. All righty. Now mm. we're getting into some exciting times. Algebra. Yeah. So let's yeah. start off with our first algebra problem solving question. Mm. So here we have Mr. Thomas. And Mr. Thomas builds a fence around his rectangular vegetable garden of eight meet squared meters. Mm. If the length is twice the breadth, Determine the dimensions of Mr. Thomas's vegetable garden. Yeah. Now, is this something that we come across a lot of the times, don't it? You have, a, you have a garden, maybe mm. you have a farm, you need to fence it, yeah. right? These yeah. are things that we come across in real mm. life. How is it that we're going to help Mr. Thomas? Right. Mm -hmm. So, have you read the question carefully? I think so. I think so, and I've identified my, my key points. Uh, such as? Such as, one, he has a rectang rectangular vegetable <laughs> garden, right? So, yeah. so I know the shape, so that's mm -hmm. important. Um, I also know the area, which is eight squared meters, right? right? Um, it also told me that the length is twice the breadth, mm -hmm. right? So those are a few things that I know from reading the question. Definitely. Some persons are not like me, and sometimes you have to reread the question. Mm -hmm. So that's another strategy that we can employ sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. you read it one time, okay, I read it. I got through really fast and I read it once. But sometimes you need to reread the question. And so that is also good. And on the second read, you may want to now go ahead and mm -hmm. underline or highlight or circle the key facts in the question. So right. And there's one strategy that we did not highlight, which is very important, and especially for, for this particular question. Mm -hmm. Draw a diagram. There we go. <laughs> there right. we go. All right. So let's see what's going on with Mr. Thomas. So we're helping him out with the dimensions mm -hmm. of his farm. And hey. as you rightfully said, let's draw a diagram. Mm -hmm. So we know that this garden is rectangular in mm -hmm. shape. So here we have a rectangle. Yeah. And what do we know about a rectangle? 
right? Mm -hmm. So we know that what? Opposite sides are equal, equal. Mm -hmm. and, and parallel. Mm -hmm. So if I know, for example, the dimension at the top here, I automatically know the one at the bottom. That is true. All right. All right. So, so in this case, we're going to let L be representative of the length mm -hmm. and B represent the breadth. So we're going to go ahead and label our length mm -hmm. and breadth. All right. Okay. Nice. So the question did, did go on to tell us some more information. We mm. also knew the area of this wonderful garden, right? Mm. And we knew that the area of this garden is eight squared meters. Mm. And we know that finding area in math, we normally multiply length times breadth. And when we talk about area, what exactly are we talking mm. about? It's really the amount of surface in, in that particular region. Right now, mm -hmm. if, you, if we had time, we could just divide it up into small little unit squares, but we don't have time for that. And that is where this formula really comes in handy. Okay, so awesome. So we all, we're, we're supposed to be very familiar with yeah. this by now. One other thing that the question mentioned is mm -hmm. the length is twice the breadth. And so we can express L in terms of B. Right. So L is equal to? To be. to be. So here where we have L as our length, we can simply replace that with to, to be. be. Oh, and we're seeing some common variables here, B yes. and B. Mm -hmm. All right, so let us see what is going to happen. All right. Mm -hmm. So again, we know the area, eight mm -hmm. squared meters. We also know the formula for finding the area of the garden, which was length times breadth. And mm -hmm. in, in this case, we replace L with 2B. And so it's just simply 2B multiply B, right? right? And so we can equate both of them. So 8 is equal to 2B squared. squared. And how do we get the, the B squared? Well, B multiply B would mm -hmm. give us B squared. All right. <laughs> All right. So what's next? All right, so now we can attempt to find the value for the variable b, mm -hmm. and we, so we're going to be solving for b. So in this case, we have 8 equals 2b squared. Mm -hmm. We simply divide both sides by 2. So it's 8 divided by 2, 2b two mm -hmm. squared divided by 2. What we're left with is 4 is equal to b squared, mm -hmm. right? Now I know that he's, he's saying, but what's... <laughs> divide by two but I don't say divide by two on one side sometimes you know we just skip out that step on but that essentially what is happening is on both sides of the equation mm -hmm. we're doing we're dividing by two right now we're here now where it is four is equal to b squared mm -hmm. now we don't want the value of b squared we'd like the value of b, b. now how is it that we're going to go ahead and find the value of b All right so similarly like um, to the previous step where we divided both sides by two, mm -hmm. what we'll do here is actually find the square root. Which is the inverse of squaring. Which is the inverse of this, right, right, definitely. So when we find the inverse of mm. um, squaring, which is finding the square root, mm -hmm. we'll find that we'll have two solutions. Yes. We'll have positive two and a negative two. Mm -hmm. So B is equal to either positive, positive two, two or, or negative, negative two. two. No. We're dealing with the dimensions of a garden. Mm. Can we have negative dimensions? Uh. A question for you guys at home. Can we have the dimensions be negative? Is that possible? Hmm. That's a good question. Isn't it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so please note that the breadth cannot be negative, And mm -hmm. so we do not consider that solution. So when we're dealing with measurements. We don't mm -hmm. consider the negative um, yeah. values. Definitely. So in this case, B... Um, or our breadth is simply two, two meters, meters and the length which is twice the breadth is mm. in turn four meters yeah. right and, and that's crucial now so, because students would normally maybe leave their answer at b equals mm -hmm. minus our our our, 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 our positive two mm -hmm. right yes but this is the final answer now because it may mention that what the length is twice the the breadth yes and so you see that final writing up part is very yeah. crucial. Definitely. Very, Definitely. very crucial. So finale, we've mm. written our answer. And so we know that our question is completely yeah. finished. Now, can we prove that our answer is correct? Of course we could. Yeah. So we could go ahead and substitute, couldn't we? Yeah. yeah. We could substitute. So if we went back to the area of the garden. So this mm -hmm. is now where we're checking. So yes, we write the checking. finale <laughs> and now we're going to check. But, yeah. you know, we can go ahead yeah. and check. And so we can mm -hmm. go back. So we had 2B. Mm -hmm. multiply b right. so here it is that we're finding the area and we know that b is actually two meters right. so it's going to be 
2 multiply 2 meters multiply 2 meters ah. and that in turn will give us 8, eight. squared meters Definitely. so i can check and I, I already wrote my answer but i can verify <laughs> that my answer is indeed yeah, correct yeah. All right. all right, so we have gone through the steps. We've gone through all the steps of problem solving mm -hmm. in this case because if we even notice, we, um, we assigned mm -hmm. variables to the unknown quantities right, that definitely. we had, right? Mm -hmm. So we've gone through all the steps of problem solving and I hope that you guys at home are taking note of this so that you too can go through the steps of problem solving when you work in your questions. All right, next question. Yay. Yeah. So in a, in a cafeteria, mm -hmm. three coffees and four donuts costs one thousand and five dollars mm -hmm. ah. in the same cafeteria five coffees and seven donuts cost one thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars how much do you have to pay for four coffees and six donuts well one thing about this cafeteria <laughs> it's expensive i don't want to buy no coffee and donuts here yeah, it's all really expensive right but um, there are times when actually you're spending this amount yeah. of money, I don't realize. But, um, mm -hmm. So we have read the question. Yes. What, what, what do we notice about this question? I am seeing where I am seeing two different situations. So in this case, we have systems of equations mm -hmm. that may come out from this. Right. All right. right. right because I'm seeing some com common variables coffee donut, coffee donut. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. S so both, so both the scenarios are looking at coffees and donuts, mm -hmm. and you, you get in the total cost, right? right? But you realize that the quantities of each item is different. Different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we identified a few things there. For you guys at home, you may underline this or circle this important information because it will be useful in creating your equations a little later on. Um, you also need to figure out what the question is really asking you for. So it's asking you, how much do you have to pay for four coffees and six donuts? Yeah. Very yeah. important. Very important. All right. So we can press go, right? Press go. All right. So again, we're going to assign mm -hmm. some values to our variables. Mm -hmm. So we're going to our variables to the values. Yeah. <laughs> so let yeah. X be the price of one coffee mm -hmm. and let Y be the price of one, one donut. donut. All right. Right, so there were three coffees, mm -hmm. four donuts, mm -hmm. and it cost one thousand and five dollars. Five dollars. So to write the equation, we just simply have what three x plus four y equals one thousand five. Okay, and we also had five coffees and seven donuts, and the cost is one thousand seven hundred fifteen dollars. So this can now be expressed as five x plus seven y equals one thousand. 1,715. 1, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have our two equations. systems of, of equations. Yes. Nice. All righty. All right. So we get here by subtraction. So we we did some we we we, we um did some processing with both equations. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and subtracted our equations, and we we ended up with. 2x plus 3y mm -hmm. is equal to $710. Yeah. So it's what? Two coffees plus three donuts equals $710. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So why do we do this? Right. Well, well, that is why it is important for us to read the question carefully. Mm -hmm. Because based on what the question is asking, mm -hmm. then after you have set up your system of equations, then you will realize that if you subtract, because there are various um, methods in terms of solving um, simultaneous equations. Mm -hmm. We could use a graphical method. We could use elimination, substitution. But based on how this question is structured, we see that there's a, a, a relationship between the two um, equations. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I subtract them, then the answer that I will get, I could easily use that to generate my final response. Okay. So there, there you go. So another strategy, I guess, is fi figuring out which one of the methods that you have, because you have several methods mm -hmm. at your disposal mm -hmm. when it comes on to math, figuring out which one is the best fit right. for a particular equation. Definitely. All right. So we subtracted. So... To end it off, we're going to now multiply all of our terms by 2. Mm. 
Now, here's why we're multiplying by two. Uh -huh. Remember that the question asked us for the value of four coffees and six donuts. Definitely. So if we look at the equation that we have mm. here, where it says 2x plus 3y is equal to $710, we'll realize that if we wanted to find double that amount, yeah. we yeah. simply multiply. Definitely. So in multiplying now, we get the value of the four coffees and the six donuts, mm -hmm. which works out to be $1,420. Right? Mm -hmm. And this was easy, easy, real fast. Look at that. <laughs> no sweat. We just got through. <laughs> but I wonder if mm -hmm. I'm correct. Are we going to check it? We definitely can check. Okay. Right? And our viewers at home can, can check as well. So how would we check? We would substitute our value for, for X, mm -hmm. which is um, for what? One coffee. Right? And then our value for Y. Right? Multiply four times the, the cost for the coffee six times the cost for the, for the donut, and then our answer should be $1,420. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Right? No stress. No stress. And we, we simply are going to, again, mm. write out our final answer. Yeah. So we did not skip that stage, guys. <laughs> we went ahead and we wrote out our final yeah. answer. So in this case, our final response is four coffees and six donuts cost $1,420. $1, so put on a nice... Pretty bow, and we're finished. Yeah. Nice. All right. So that's just two questions down. Mm. I hope you guys are still with mm. us, and you're you're getting the hang of this as we go along. Yeah. All right. So next question. So at a theater, one thousand tickets were sold, right? Mm -hmm. No, adult adult tickets cost eight dollars fifty cents. Children's ticket cost four dollars fifty cents. And a total of $7,300 was collected. How much, how many tickets of each kind were sold? So here, what I'm seeing again, this is a similar situation to the first one, mm -hmm. right? I'm seeing some common variables. Mm -hmm. Children's ticket, adult's ticket, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm seeing some costs involved. Mm -hmm. So I can use the same strategy that I used before to set up a system of equation. Yes, indeed. All right. All right. So, 1,000 tickets were sold. Okay, maybe mm. the, you think this is Jamaica or is America? Uh, it has to be America. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let X be the number of adult tickets and mm -hmm. Y be the number of children tickets. So, again, we've assigned values to the unknown quanti yes. value, um, quantities that mm -hmm. we have. So... Again, we can formulate two equations out mm -hmm. of the given information, and we're going to give you those two equations. Or, yes. or wait, how about this? You quickly write down the two equations that you see coming mm. out of this one nice. before we nice. give you <laughs> our two <laughs> equations. So quickly, guys, formulate your two equations mm. that are coming out of this scenario. All right, you think they're formulated already? I should. Okay. Yeah. So the total number of tickets... So mm. we have x plus y is equal to 1,000. Mm. So we know that there, there's a total of 1,000 1, tickets. tickets. Part two, the total money collected. So we know that we sold some tickets mm -hmm. to both adults and children. Right. And that equated to $7,300, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the ticket cost. So the adult tickets were $8.50. So that's why we have 8.5x. Plus, mm -hmm. the children tickets were $4.50, which is the reason why we have 4.5Y. Four, 4. Okay. All right. All right. So, so for that second equation, mm -hmm. um, so X, in, X is the number of adult tickets. Mm -hmm. So let us say I, I have sold five adult tickets. Mm -hmm. I would multiply that five times $8.50. Which is the unit cost. It is the unit cost. Yes. Right? And if I, if I had sold seven children's tickets, mm -hmm. I would have multiplied seven by... Four dollars fifty cents. Again, add my 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 my, my cost total mm -hmm. cost, and then I should get what it is equal to. Yes, that's what we are saying. Yes, that's what that's right. exactly what we're saying. Definitely. Here. All right. So I hope we're all on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in equation two, <laughs> we'll make the coefficients whole numbers by multiplying both sides by ten. Yeah. All right. So it's just for ease of computation mm -hmm. that we're doing this. It makes it easier for you to be able to compu compute it <laughs> when it is that we're dealing with whole numbers. All right. So 
all right, we have x is equal to 700 and y is equal to 300, mm -hmm. but how did we get there? How did we get here? Mm -hmm. All right, so again, we can use any, any one of the, the, the different methods that are there, all right? But we are going to gonna go to the board. We're going to go to the whiteboard, and we're going to use one of these strategies mm -hmm. to see if our answer is actually correct. Mm -hmm. All right, so our equations. First equation, x plus y is equal to 1,000. Yes. Then it's what? 85x plus 45y plus 45y is equal to? 73,000. 73,000. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the, the method I'm going to choose is substitution, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I'm choosing substitution is that I realize that in equation one, for example, the, the coefficients there. Are one. It, 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 both of them are one. Yes. All right. So can, I can easily use substitution. All right, so from equation one, I'm using equation one. All right, so this is equation one, and this is equation two. Right, I'm using equation one. So equation one says x plus y is equal to 1,000. So let us say I want to find the value of, of for y. I would just substitute, um, subtract x from both sides. Mm -hmm. That would leave y is equal to 1,000 minus x. Mm -hmm. Right, so this now is my value for y. So wherever I see y now, in equation two, I can substitute 1,000 minus x. Yes. All right, so let us do our substitution. All right, so in equation two, we are substituting in equation two. So it is what? 85x, 85 x plus, plus 45, 45 multiply ah, 1,000 1, minus, minus x. x. Because that's the value for, for y. Yes. Right? And all of this is equal to? 73,000. 73,000. All right. So all I need to do now is to just use my distributive law here. So 85x plus, plus 45, 45 times 1,000. 45,000. That's 45,000. Subtract. Subtract. 45x. 45x equals? 73,000. 73,000. Mm. All right, so I can do a quick calculation now. So here I'm seeing 85x and I'm seeing 45x. 45x. And you're subtracting, and I'm so subtracting, we're grouping like terms. Grouping like terms right there. So I'm just taking away 45x from 80, 85x. Mm -hmm. That would leave what? 40x. Just 40x, all right? And that is equal to, I, I, I'm doing a number of steps in one. Because at this level, at, 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 grade, at grade 11, mm -hmm. we should be able to skip some steps. Because remember, we are working against time as well. True. So while we are explaining the steps, you should be able to skip some of these steps. All right? So this is a, a positive 45,000. Yes. All right? We're going to subtract 45,000 from both sides. Mm -hmm. So this 45,000 will be gone. Then I'm going to subtract 45,000 from 73,000. Mm -hmm. Right? That would leave me with what? Um, 28,000? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Right? So I just need to do what now? Simply divide by our divide coefficient of x. Divide both sides by the coefficient. So it's 40. So 40. 40. Yes. Right? Yes. Right. So 40 into 28,000. Mm -hmm. That would leave 700. 700. Right? So here we are seeing that x is equal to? 700. 700. All right. All right. And so now, are we finished? No, because we only have the value of x. X. So we need to still find the value of y. 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 Right. All right. So here again, since we have the value of x to be 700, we can mm -hmm. always substitute now to this find the value, value of in, y. in one of the, the equations. All right. Now, if you realize, this is a new equation that we had formed. Mm -hmm. Right. So we could, we could call this equation three. So an easy equation to substitute in is always equation three. Yes, because the coefficient of x and right? y are just one. Which is this one, by the way, all right? Oh. So here we have three. now y is equal to 1,000 1, subtract, subtract 700. X. So it is 1,000 1, subtract 700. So therefore, y is 300. Y is 300. Look at that. <sighs> And on that note, we're mm. going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more math. Mm. So stay tuned.
Okay, welcome back. Let's continue with the lesson. All right, so we have just gone through this particular question, mm -hmm. right? We, we showed our answer first, and then we use the substitution method mm -hmm. to solve the system of equation. Again, you, we could have used the elimination method, right? Or any other meth method of your choice, right? The important thing is that we arrive at our correct response. And again, we can easily check mm -hmm. by just substituting our, our answers back in any one of the two equations, right? So if I substitute um, x 700 for x in equation 1 and 300 for y, again in equation 1, I'll get 700 plus 300 gives me 1,000. 1, and the same thing, if I, if I had done that in equation 2, then my final answer must be $73,000. Yes. And so we've checked our answer. Mm -hmm. Um, and very, very last, mm. final, we have to wrap it up in a nice bow. We've also gone ahead and written the final answer. Yeah. So here, therefore, the number of adult tickets sold is 700, and mm -hmm. the number of children tickets sold is 300. 300. And this is very important and pointed, because now we are answering the question mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. asked of us. Right? Definitely. So you telling me X and Y, yes, I mean, I can yeah. go back up the top and see, but me putting it nice and dandy to let you know mm -hmm. exactly what mm -hmm. X and Y represents and exactly what 700 and 300 represents is important. So do not negate this fact and say, cho, them can go figure it out. <laughs> All right, so right. let's look at another question. Mm. So going for a long trip, Thomas drove for two hours and had lunch. After lunch, he drove for three more hours at the speed that is 20 kilometers per hour more than before lunch. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The total trip was 460 kilometers. What was his speed after lunch? Yeah. Wow. No, this is a long one. Long Maybe one. for this one, you may need to reread. Definitely. Right? So you may mm -hmm. need to reread this question to get exactly what the question is mm -hmm. saying. Because, you know, it said my speed before <laughs> lunch and my speed yeah, after yeah. lunch. What is that? Yeah. So you reread the question and highlight the important facts. Right. All right. So how do you think we can approach this question now? All right. Let us dissect it. So we have read through a number of times. We yes pick out our important information, mm -hmm. right? So we are ready now to put a strategy in place. Yes. All right. So let's take a look. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let X be the speed before, before lunch. lunch. All right. So the distance, the distance driven before lunch is equal to 2X. Mm -hmm. All right. After lunch, the speed is 20 kilometers per hour more, more than before lunch. Yeah. Now, is that important? Definitely. Okay. So, after lunch, the speed is therefore x plus 20. 20. Right. Because before lunch, the speed was just x. x. Mm -hmm. Right? So, if it's 20 kilometers per hour more, mm -hmm. then we, we have to add that 20. If it had said less, then we would have... Subtracted. Right. Okay. So now the distance after lunch is therefore 3 multiply x plus mm. 20. Yeah. All right. So the distance, the total distance traveled was mm. 460 kilometers. And hence we have this equation here. So we just put everything together. Mm -hmm. So it was 2x <coughs> plus 3 multiply x plus 20 is equal to 460. So at this stage, we can go ahead and yeah. solve. Solve. All right. So solve the above equation. We'll find the speed before lunch as x is equal to 80 kilometers per hour. Mm. And again, <laughs> as Mr. Price would have done, we would have gone ahead and used the distributive mm. law. We would have then um, grouped like terms, mm -hmm. right? And in this case, it would have been 3x plus 2x, which will mm. give us 5x, right. and we're using the distributive principle, so it would have been 3 multiplied 20, which would mm. have given us 60, right. and then we'd simply just sub subtract 60, 60 from, from both sides of my equation, which would leave us with 400. So mm. it would have been 5x is equal to 400, mm -hmm. and when we divide 5x, in, sorry, when we divide <laughs> 5 into 400, we would have gotten 80, 80 kilometers, kilometers per hour. hour. And we did all of that without lifting a pen. Yeah. 
Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, and, and that's a good um, approach to take. Because if you if we are gonna use calculator for everything that we are doing, time is gonna run out on don't. us. Don't. Right. And sometimes you don't even realize how to use a calculator properly. You tap, exactly. tap, tap in and you don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. utilize these as the things. The distributive law, okay, I learned mm -hmm. that over there. Mm -hmm. And I learned about grouping like terms over there. But put everything together because math is not one thing over there and one thing yeah. over there. Everything comes together to make everything make sense. So true. All right. So the speed after lunch is 20 kilometers per hour more than that before lunch. Mm -hmm. And therefore, 80 kilometers per hour plus 20 kilometers per hour would give us 100, 100. kilometers per hour. Nice. nice. So we answered that question. Yeah. What, we, what we are seeing as well, the, the, the speed after lunch is faster. Yes, yes, yes. I think he got more energy. Really? After or maybe lunch. more to hurry up to go home to sleep. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Right? All right. So, oh, nice. Mm. Volume. Yeah. So here we have another question. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys are getting the drift of yeah. how to do these questions. So here we're looking at volume. Mm -hmm. So the volume V of a gas varies inversely mm -hmm. as the pressure, as the pressure, the temperature is held, as the pressure, the temperature is held constant. constant. All right. So volume varies inversely mm -hmm. with temperature yeah inversely what does that right. mean so, so so these are two concepts that we that we would have um, heard so it, it can vary inversely mm -hmm. or it can vary directly mm -hmm. right in this case in it, it varies inversely means that as one increase the other one the other one decreases mm -hmm. right so as as volume increases for example the the pressure in terms of the temperature decreases so that is what it means by inversely. If it was directly, as one increases, the other increases as well. So inversely is like opposite then? Like opposite. Okay. So the first part of the question mm -hmm. asks us to kindly write an equation relating V and P. Mm -hmm. So we just talked about the inverse relationship. Yeah. How yeah. do we now go ahead and write that as an equation? Yeah. Oh. Really? Yeah, just that. Wow. So V is equal to K divided by P. Mm -hmm. That's it? Right. Or, or if, 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 if persons wanted to write it another way, it could have been written as V is equal to 1 over P, or, or 1 divided by P mm -hmm. times K, or K times 1 divided by P. To show the inverse to, to relationship. To show that inverse um, relationship. Okay. All right, so... Part two of the question says, if V is equal to 12.8, when P is 500, determine the constant of variation. Uh, now, constant of variation, what is what that? And is how that? do I identi identify that from the equation that uh, I wrote? Right. So from our equation now, we would realize our, our constant of variation would be that K. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is what the, the equation is, is changed by. Right, whether it is a, a positive number or, or a fractional number, then it, it will de determine how the change happens. All right, so when it is asking for the constant of variation, it's just asking us to find the value of p, really. Okay. Right, and now we have our value for, for v, which is 12.8. We have our value for p, which is 500. All we need to do now is to substitute those values in the equation that we have formed and find the, the value for p. For K. For K. For K. Which is our constant. Yes. <laughs> so we're finding the value of K. All right. So as you can see, we went ahead and made K the subject of our equation. Mm -hmm. So there are several ways you can do it. Maybe yeah. this is easier for you to see, mm -hmm. to just go ahead and make K the yes. subject at the mm -hmm. beginning. So again, we made K the subject and we simply substituted as, as Mr. Price would have mm -hmm. said. So it's 500 multiplied 12.8, which gave us... 6,400, and that would be the value of K. Okay. Wow. Mm. This is how simply the, the, the problem-solving things come? Simple. Right? I but thought there were more at difficult. At times, the terms just throw us off. You Inverse, know? And Inverse and constant, vari constant, constant vari of variation. It sounds like more like, like physics. It does. Right? So it must be difficult. But maths right? and physics. Maths is physics. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Oh, so the question does not stop yeah. there. It then, then went on to say, calculate the value of V when P is 480. Mm. Now, I'm seeing a little bit of a trend. One part of the question is related to another part. 
And mm -hmm. this happens a lot on our C-Sec paper. Yeah. So part mm -hmm. A is related to part B and part C is related to part... Mm -hmm. It's coming back here. Coming right back. Okay. Right. So, again, we're starting off with our equation. Mm -hmm. V is equal to K divide P. And we're going to substitute. substitute. So as we would have found in the second equation that we mm -hmm. worked through, yes. or the first one that we actually worked out, um, K is actually 6,400. Mm -hmm. So we're going to sim simply substitute in this case mm -hmm. K with 6,400. And we're given the value of P, which is 480. So in substituting, we can then go on to find the value of V. Definitely. And that is? 13.33333333. You ever hear you see a calculator doing that? Yeah, what does yeah. that mean? The, 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 the numbers are just recurring. Ah, right? Indeed. So there's no need to write with all of these threes. Good. Right? We just simply put a little symbol there. So put a little asterisk there to, to mean that it's recurring. You know, it's recurring. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So that was another question. Mm. Boy, we're going, we're, we're going places, we're going Mr. Places. Price. Going places. Yes, <clears throat> we're on to another one. Mm. So the length in centimeters of the sides of a right angle triangle are A, A subtract 7, and A plus 1. Mm. Okay. So those are just three sides. Yeah, man. And it must be three because we are talking about a triangle. Yes, and, and they ah. did specify that we're looking at a right, right angle angled triangle. Right triangle. What that mean again? So, so seeing that I, again should turn on a light in my head. Uh, right angle triangle. Mm -hmm. What am I seeing? All right, one of the angles should measure 90 degrees. Should. All right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm seeing if it's a right angle triangle, I must have a hypotenuse. Right? I, I mean, not no side is opposite and adjacent. That mm -hmm. is not important, no. Mm -hmm. But there's a hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. And my hypotenuse must be the longest side on the triangle. Mm -hmm. Right? So having that information in my head, then I'm looking at the, 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 the dimensions that are given. The A minus 7, the, the A plus 1. So I can now visualize it before I draw it. But then, you know, mm. we're going to get our little ruler out and yeah. our pencil and we're going yeah. to actually draw it. So the question also says that we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem mm. to write an equation in terms of A to represent the relationship among the three sides of the triangle. All right. So first, let me draw my triangle. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. I've drawn my triangle and I've labeled the sides in my triangle. Question. Go ahead. How do I know where to put the different values. I'm seeing three values up there in terms of the, the length of the sides. Mm -hmm. A, A subtract 7, and A plus 1. How do I know where to put, especially the A plus 1? All right. Well, you mentioned something very important at mm. start. When, I, when you mentioned the hypotenuse, yeah. I know that the hypotenuse is the longest yeah. side in my triangle. So if I have, if I have A subtract 7, Mm -hmm. hmm, versus mm. A plus 1 yeah. versus A, the longest side has to be A, a plus, plus 1. one. Nice. nice. You thought you could trick me. <laughs> you thought you were going to get me you're, this you're morning. Good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So mm. there we have it. So we labeled all the sides in our mm -hmm. triangle. And now we're going to integrate somebody that everybody knows about. Yeah. Pythagoras. Yes. Right? Yes. You're supposed to hear his name over, over and over and in your over class. And over. All right. So how do we utilize Pythagoras' theorem mm. here? All right, so what, is Pyth what, what does Pythagoras say right, in terms of a right-angled triangle? Oh, Lord. Mm. This is going to be a mouthful. <laughs> <clears throat> so the sum of the square of the two shorter sides mm -hmm. is equal to the, sum, the square of the longest side in my triangle, yeah. which in this case is my hypotenuse. Definitely. Okay. Uh, mouthful. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that was a lot. All right. So let's see. Mm. So there we have it. Yeah. So side squared plus side squared is equal to hypotenuse mm. squared. So this is really what Pythagoras mm. tells us. Right. And, and I like how you, how you write the formula in terms of side squared plus side squared. Mm -hmm. Apart from writing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Tell us what is wrong with that because <laughs> I always hear it. Why? Right, because the triangle don't have to be labeled ABC. Exactly. Right? It can be labeled PQR. The importance is understanding the... The, the, the sides and the, their relationships. The concepts, so exactly. Right. So we need mm -hmm. to understand the relationships between the sides. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Not A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Mark that out. Mark that out. Okay. So we can now go ahead and substitute, mm. right? Definitely. So our, before we even do anything, the hypotenuse, the, the length of the hypotenuse is? A plus one. A plus one. And we can side square, side square can be any one of the any two one. sides, right? right? 
So there you have it. And now we're going to attempt to now simplify mm. our equations. Yeah. So. so we're going to solve the equation for A. Mm. All right. So here we have a few important and interesting yes. things. We have A squared plus mm. A subtract 7 all squared mm -hmm. is equal to A plus 1 squared. Yeah. Yeah. Those squared things. I'm nervous. <laughs> So if we did a little bit of, a, of, a, of an expansion of brackets, uh -huh. right? So we expanded our brackets, we would have gotten something that looks like this. A squared plus A squared subtract 14A plus 49 is equal to A squared plus 2A plus 1. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no, at this stage, can we do anything interesting? Uh, well, I'm seeing some common terms. Okay. Right, so I can go ahead and, and group those common terms. Okay, so I can group my like terms. Yeah. Yay! Grouping them, magic. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we grouped all of our A squared terms together, and what we're left with is simply A. Um, we also had minus four, 14A mm -hmm. subtract 2A, and so we have 16A right. plus 49 subtract 1, because we would have then subtracted one from, from both, both sides. sides. So we mm -hmm. we're left with 48, and that is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Now, this looks like something I've seen before. Yeah. What mm. does this look like to you? It, it looks like a quadratic equation. Aha, uh -huh. and yeah. how do we know yeah. that it's a quadratic equation? Well, I'm seeing that the highest power there is a square. Indeed. A square. So the A is squared, mm -hmm. right? And it, it goes down. I'm seeing that the, the powers are going down by one. So mm -hmm. I have an A square there, then the. the a. The power at the A there is just one, mm -hmm. and then the, the, in the 48, I do, I, I'm not seeing an A, mm -hmm. right? I could always say that the, there's an A there, but it is raised to a zero power, yes. which is just one, yes. right? So it, it is in the form of a quadratic equation. Okay, so this is also an interesting one that we're mm. introducing now. Yeah. Can we solve this quadratic equation? Yeah. Hmm. Do you guys at home remember how to solve mm. quadratic equations? This is a very important tool, especially on your exam, mm. yeah. right? So... How we get this? Mm. All right. So again, there are various methods you could use. Obviously, this one mm -hmm. is that we just factorize. Um, I'm seeing where this seems like the AC method. Okay. So we did some factorization. We did some factorization okay. here. All right. But if persons wanted to use, um, let us say, the, the formula, mm -hmm. right, they could go ahead and, and use that. It depends on what you are more comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So here we're not stipulating what, which one, which method you should use. Mm -hmm. Again, we're saying to you that you have an arsenal. You know yeah. all of these things, dip into your tool chest and take out what works best for you for, for you. the question. Yeah. All right. So this is saying A subtract 4 multiply A subtract 12 is equal to 0. Mm. And we know that in this case, it simply means that A is either equal to 4 or A is equal to 12. Yeah. So, so A is equal so to 4 go. or A is equal mm. to 12. So all we did was to equate both of these terms to zero. So a minus four equals zero mm -hmm. or a minus 12 equals zero. Mm -hmm. Right. And the reason for that, if you're multiplying two terms and you get an answer of zero, it means that one of the terms must be zero. Exactly. Right. Four times zero is zero. A mm -hmm. hundred times zero is going to give a zero. So one of them is equal to zero. I'm not sure which one. So I, I equate both, both terms to zero and then solve. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So now it says, hence, so since we've done this, mm. hence, state the length of the three sides of our triangle. Yeah. And all we're simply doing now is we're going to substitute, so, yeah. right? So we're just substituting the values of, the value of A mm. for all three sides, yes. right? So I'm going to ask you guys now at home to go ahead and substitute. And we're going to take our final break. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Okay, welcome back to class time. Let us continue. So before we went on the break, you were explaining this question now. So this last part asks us to, it says, hence, mm -hmm. 
state the length of the three sides of the triangle, hence. Mm -hmm. So hence, meaning that I'm going to use something that I had from before. Definitely. Right. So it's all connected. Yeah. All right. So we knew that from before we had A, the value of A being either 4 or 12. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're going to get... So if we substituted... We substituted what? Well, in this case, we substituted A. So the value of A here is 12. Mm -hmm. And so one side would have been 5 centimeters. Mm -hmm. The hypotenuse, 13 centimeters. And mm -hmm. another side, 12 centimeters. Right. right. And I'm, I'm hearing someone asking the question. Why not no, 4? Why not 4? We have gotten two values. A equals 4 and A equals 12. Mm -hmm. How did we know that we should use 12 and not 4? Well, mm -hmm. here it is yeah. now that we're going to look at our arsenal. Yeah. Now, we know about a, a few things about numbers and length and, you know, these mm -hmm. dimensions. Can we have a negative dimension? Ah, Can right. we? And, and that's a concept that we looked at before. Before. Look at that. Right. So if it is that we substituted um, A for 4, mm -hmm. we would have... For one, the length of one side being negative three centimeters. Uh, now, is that possible? Uh, Ask yourself that but question. But why it's not possible, though? Hmm? We know that we cannot have a, a dimension or a length being negative, but mm -hmm. why not? You tell me, why not? Right? Because when you look at the number line, the <laughs> negative means what? It's actually, it's less than zero. Mm -hmm. Now, think about a dimension that is less than zero. D does that exist? Could I see it? I, I can't see it. No. I so then we'd have a problem. We'd have a problem. Yes, yeah, so it could not it could be not. less than zero. No, it could never happen. Okay. No. So there you go, guys. So that is how we knew yeah. which one to substitute mm -hmm. to find the length of the sides. Right. Now, this may be a trick question for them on the paper, ah. right? Ah. So I hope you're really taking note mm -hmm. because something like this may very well come back. And you have to say to yourself, but wait... How I get that again? Remember yeah. what we did here this morning. Definitely. All right. Now, remember that last step in the, in the strategies mm -hmm. that we highlighted mm -hmm. are the second to last step. We have to check our answer. Indeed. Now, does this represent a right angle triangle? Well, as far as I know, yes. Yeah. Doesn't it? So I'm yes. seeing that the hypotenuse is, is the longest, is the longest side. side and that remains. Yes. So that should give me an indication that I am on the right track. Yes, indeed. So, so if the, you mean that if I did my working out and the hypotenuse was the, the shortest side in comparison to everything else, something wrong? You're going to lose some marks. What do you because mean? Because it asked me to label. If I'm going to label my triangle, then the dimensions must be accurate. The, the longest side could never be five True. Um, centimeters, True. while another side is 13. Indeed, indeed. And also, the hypotenuse is directly opposite my right angle. Ah, that is also something that is important definitely. to note. All right. So, guys, you know, we're going yeah. on and we're going on strong. We're going on well. We're writing down our final answer. All right, here's another mm. one. So, here's another question. A strip of wire of length 32 centimeters is cut into two pieces. One piece is bent to form a square of sides of length x centimeters. Mm. The other piece is bent to form a rectangle of length l centimeters and width, width 3 centimeters. Mm. The diagram below, not drawn to scale, shows the square and the rectangle. All right. All right. So here we have the square and the rectangle, mm. and it is that we're going to now um, do some working out with it. So we've gone ahead and labeled. Awesome. And we're asked to write an expression in, in L, L and X. X for the length of the wire. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, we've gone ahead and written our equations. Mm -hmm. So, 4X plus 2L, 2L plus 6, right? Right. And it is talking about the length of the wire. Mm -hmm. Right? Really, what they're asking us to find or what they are suggesting here is that we find the perimeter mm -hmm. of these shapes, mm -hmm. right? Because the length of the wire is really the perimeter, the distance around the around boundary, the bo boundary mm -hmm. of each of these um, shapes. Mm -hmm. All right. So they asked us again to show that L is equal to 13 subtract 2X. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, we use the information that was given. Right. And we just simply, you know, equated that to 32. Mm -hmm. Did our substitution, did our substitution <laughs> right? And we're working our way down. And simply we found yeah. out that L is equal to 13 
subtract two x. All right. So we have proven it. So we've simply proven that L is equal to 13 subtract 2x. Yeah. So not all the time when we're looking and doing an equation, it is that we need to find a numerical mm -hmm. value. Definitely. Sometimes we're doing a little bit of a proof. Mm -hmm. Guys, if they say, show me this, you're just going to show them. Don't bother say, oh gosh, I don't see. It's two, it's 100. How I get the answer? Relax. You're just Relax. simply showing or proving your answers. So true. Right? So true. So it's important to note what the question is asking you for. Mm. All right. All right. All right. So is there another part to, to this question? All right. All right. So here it is saying that the sum of the areas of the square and the rectangle is represented as X, S. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we need to show that S is equal to X squared subtract 6X plus 39. Now, the sum of the areas. So now we're looking at area. So before we looked at parameter, now we're looking ah, at area. Right. Oh, okay. All right. So again, we've mm -hmm. highlighted the area of each one of the shapes. And as you can see, because this one is a square, mm -hmm. the area is x squared. And with our rectangle, the area is 3 multiplied 13 subtract 2x. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So... Now, I want for you guys to show this at home. So take a picture. Yeah. Take a picture. We've been working <laughs> so hard this morning. We've been talking about the strategies. Yeah. And we want for you guys to do this one as homework, mm. don't it? Yeah, we can yeah, give them some right, homework today. Right. So let's do some mm. homework. Take a picture of this and show that mm -hmm. S is equal to X squared subtract 6X plus 39. Yeah. No. Mm. We're out of time for this yeah. lesson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep practicing and stay safe.